This one's for all you mamas out there who are grinding day in, day out, even when you've got nothing left to give. I wanted to just cheer you on because I know exactly how that feels speaking as a mom, especially when life feels like you're constantly changing nappies, dealing with tantrums, doing laundry on repeat all day, every day. So I hear you. I feel you. Today, I wanted to talk about the calling of a mother. This is 310. I'm Sahar. Let's get into it. Today's anchoring verse is Psalm 127 verses 3 to 5, which is quite a popular one, so don't be surprised if you already know it. And I'll read from the message version. It says, Don't you see that children are God's best gift, the fruit of the womb his generous legacy? Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. Love it. Growing up in my culture, um, motherhood was something that was celebrated. Having children is seen as a blessing. Um, but growing up with my mom, my mom was actually a working mom at the time. And she is just an incredible human being. I look at her and I don't know how she managed to do everything. Um, but she had her household in check. She had, I was baby number five. So, you know, she raised all us five children while having a full-time job. And she did it really well. My parents made sure that we had a good education and they really invested in us having um, strong careers. And basically they really invested in our future. And because my parents did that, I personally processed it as okay, this is what I want to focus on. What's more important is career progression and education. And motherhood is like, oh, it's just, you just pop babies out. And you know, how hard can it be? I mean, how ridiculous is that? Cause it's like the most challenging thing you will probably ever do as a, as a mother. Um, yeah, so so when, because that because of that upbringing, I, I, I sidelined motherhood and I just thought, oh, it's something you do. Everybody's doing it. I mean, that's how we all, all arrived here at the, at the end of the day. Everyone on this earth was carried by a mother. So it's like, how hard can it be? You know, um, that was the mindset that I had. So because of that, I went into marriage and, you know, after I started having children, my first daughter, my second son, my second born uh, son, I... It didn't click. It didn't click for me at this whole motherhood thing. I still felt strange and weird. Like I had children, but I felt like I was more like their big sister than their mom. And it is because I, in all, in all honesty, I, I didn't honor um, motherhood. I didn't, I just took it for granted. And so for me, it was like raising children was like a side thing. And I wanted to focus on, my focus was on other things like ministry or career and all that kind of stuff. And then I got pregnant for the third time with our son, Raphael. Now that pregnancy, that experience changed my life forever because my son actually had, we found out when we went for our first scan was that he had a, a heart condition and it, and it was actually a very, very rare heart condition. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into that testimony because what God did with that was incredibly amazing. It was a miracle. And I'll make sure, I actually filmed it for my church a while back. So I'll make sure I'll leave the link below so you can actually watch the testimony. So you can do that after watching this video if you want to. Um, but yeah, he had a very rare heart condition and it, it completely and utterly devastated me uh, because at the time, when we first got the news, I never expected it. We don't have any family history of heart conditions at birth, stuff like that. So needless to say, being pregnant and hormonal, I was a complete wreck. I felt like I was in a total nightmare. When I would sleep, I would wake up and I would just, the tears would just start flowing. And I was like that for weeks. Um, so I remember one day we had a church meeting a leadership meeting at a not at our church but another church and I remember we went there and I was struggling I was still sick and nauseous and totally emotional and I remember sitting in that meeting and I just couldn't stop the tears from flowing and I'm sure people must have thought like what's the matter with that woman um, but you know I was crying and crying and you know our senior pastor who's my spiritual father pastor Lincoln was there 
I love that man. And he just took time out because he could see how distressed I was. So he just took time out to pray with me. And when that happened, I remember he gave me a prophetic word and he said, Saha, you have the authority of a mother. And, you know, he's like, and what I'm talking about is that you can pray things and speak things into being into being with authority and things will change and happen. And when he said that at the time, it really, really blessed me and I took it on and I marinated over it. That's when I understood the calling of a mother. And have you ever heard of these testimonies when people say, oh, you know, I, I had my life completely messed up and you know, I gave my life to Jesus because I had a praying mother or a praying grandmother or you know, those kind of stories, you know, where people are like, their life was wayward and then they get their act together and then they realize that they had their mom or grandma praying for them. That's what I'm talking about. That is the calling of a mother. And you see, us women, we need to realize that it's one thing to carry children physically and it's quite another to raise children that are godly, that um, that are decent people in this world. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not the same thing. And I also believe that you can actually have the calling of the mother even if you don't carry children, because it's not about, it's not necessarily just the biological thing, which definitely helps. But if you're someone who has adopted children or someone, you're like an aunt, or you love your nieces, nephews, or you're just, a woman that takes on people that loves them, you have that calling of a mother because the calling of a mother isn't a, bio a biological thing. It's actually a condition of the heart. You know, it's you carrying and nurturing people. That's what it is. And praying over them and having the authority to speak over their lives. That is what the, a calling of a mother is. And I love the fact that the scriptures show us how we can fulfill the calling of a mother. So I want to take us to Genesis. Then God said, shall I keep back from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham is going to become a large and strong nation. All the nations of the world are going to find themselves blessed through him. Yes, I've settled on him as the one to train his children and future family to observe God's way of life, live kindly and generously and fairly so that God can complete in Abraham what he promised him. I love this. I love this so much because God had to tell Abraham, and he said this in the hearing of, you know, he knew that Sarah was listening into this conversation. And he told them this from the beginning, because once they had Isaac, Sarah had this word that she could take for herself. It's not, it wasn't just Abraham's word, it's the word for Sarah as the mother, as the one who's going to nurture this life. And he basically says to her that, you are going to have a nation and i made sure that you guys even though you were barren that you are going to have this child is because you are going to pass on godly traditions godly ways of life and godly upbringing to this child and the child and your children's children and the future generations that are going to come from you to establish a nation why did sarah need to hear this now god knows us as moms right and he knows what it's like to raise children. You know, when they're babies and they're newborns, they're all cute and cuddly and sweet, but raising children is hard work and it's exhausting, especially when they start throwing tantrums and you know what, you just feel like putting them in the bin, right? Some days, let me be honest, I haven't done it, I'm not gonna do it, but some days it just feels like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed, these kids, these kids. And raising them as well, it's, it's, it's not a glorious job, you know, you, it's challenging, it's, it can be mundane, you know, washing dishes day in, day out, washing laundry, hanging it, you know, can be very mundane. And so doing this day in, day out, you can easily get lost in the humdrum of life, you know, of, of raising children. And you forget, is this it? Is there no more to life than doing this? And God wanted to ensure that Sarah didn't end up there because he told her, remember, Remember, remember that you are not raising a child. You are raising nations to come, generations to come, and you need to keep your eyes focused. Raising children is a long-term job. It's a long-term investment. You can't look at your day-to-day -day and think there's more to my life than this. We have the incredible honor of shaping the next generation. And it can feel like, especially like I said earlier, you know, when in today's society, 
you know, it's almost like an embarrassing thing to say I'm a stay at home mom, you know, um, and there's more emphasis on us and our careers rather than raising the family unit. Most of the issues that we are facing today in society is because our families are actually broken. They're completely broken. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that working mom, I'm not dissing working moms. I've, thankfully, I'm glad God did it that way. I've had the experience of raising the kids when I did have a full-time job. I had the experience of raising them when I was a stay-at-home mom. And now I have the experience of doing it as a working from home mom. And so there's no wrong or right way of doing it, but we need to make sure that if we are stay-at-home moms, that or wherever you are as a mom, that don't belittle what you're doing. Don't put more emphasis on what you're doing outside and what people can see. And forget that actually raising a family is a very is the is the cornerstone of of society. I'm sure you've heard the saying that children are the future, and I know it's such a cliche, but it's true. But the thing is that we don't realize is that when you're building your future, when you're building your children, what builds your future, what builds your tomorrow are your actions today. So it's not something that, you know, you don't just pop babies out and then, you know, when they become adults, that's when you try to start to make them decent human beings. That's not the time that by then it's too late. It's when they're young, it's when they're still in their infancy and, and that's when you begin to nurture and raise them. And, and those years are so important and so key to us as individuals when we grow up. So I wanted to challenge your thinking concerning raising children. Are you raising children that are going to be a blessing or a curse? Are you raising children that are going to benefit the society or are they going to be a detriment? Are they going to be influencers in society or are they going to be criminals? Are they going to add to the economy or take away from it? You know, you, you, it's amazing that what we do in the secret when no one's looking in our homes as individuals can affect and shape the economy of our nation in future in the future to come it's that important but we don't we, we just get lost in the nappies and the tantrums and we just don't see past that okay i'm not saying i'm this superwoman that has it all figured out and can turn every negative situation into a positive one i'm not um there are some days where parenting is just hard it's just downright hard and and tough and you know for those kind of days even then god is using that scenario to change us to change you to change me i mean i can't even tell you how many issues that i've realized have come up from parenting i mean it's one thing to get married you know they they always say that um marriage is one of the best tools to make you more like jesus you know it's one of the best discipleship tools because um you know you have someone in your life who will challenge you constantly and things like that but I feel like parenting takes it to a whole nother level because at least when you're married to someone like with Andrew I can liaise with him I can negotiate I, we could come to a compromise you can't do that with kids you can't do that you can't negotiate and compromise with a two-year-old it's their way or the highway so there on your part is just death and I don't mean death as in physical death I mean dying to self I mean being selfless you know raising children makes you selfless raising children makes you like jesus if you allow it um i can't tell you how many issues um have i've, I've realized that I've, i'm still dealing with and i'm growing and i'm learning from raising my kids things like anger um you know you know when everything inside of you wants to just lash out and you have to just rein it in you know i'm still dealing with anger still dealing with control you know kids when whatever kids are there's a there's a mess i don't know if you've heard this saying which made me laugh my head off uh, i think i saw it as a meme somewhere it's like trying to clean the house while you have kids is like trying to brush your teeth when you're eating oreos at the same time it's just it doesn't make sense by the time i finish washing up and tidying the kitchen the living room is like a complete bombshell you know so um yeah so like you can't control that you if you keep controlling your kids they're not they're never gonna have fun they're gonna feel like they're being controlled so you just have to allow a lot of mess a lot of mistakes you can't control them um another thing that uh raising children made me 
realize is that it forces me to be present. You know, you can't just be on your phone all the time while you're raising kids. You have to put your phone away, be present, listen to them, play with them, rather than daydreaming like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, mommy, mommy, can I do this? Yeah, uh uh-huh, yeah, 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 and constantly being distracted. You have to be present. And another thing which I love about raising kids is that it's kicked back any lingering sense of procrastination in me. You know that thing, well, oh, let me just do the dishes the next day or let me just, cause it's like, if you don't wash for, or let me, I'll do the laundry another day. If I don't do their laundry tonight, they will have no uniforms to go to school tomorrow. You know, if the kids say, oh, I'm hungry, you can't say, oh, I'll do that later. You, you have to feed the kids. You have to feed the children. Um, so, <laughs> You know, so these are all things that if you allow them, they will shape you to become an incredible person. I love who I am now uh, versus the woman I was before I had kids. I've changed so much and I'm so thankful. And had I not allowed the Lord to do that, you know, it feels some days like I can't take this anymore. There's nothing left of me. And God says, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yes, you can. You know, so that's why I love it. it. It changes us completely. Even on our worst days, God is working his best. When we are weak, that's when he's strong in our lives. And if you haven't got the right or perfect circumstances, that's okay. Like, no, none of us do. We can't do this parenting thing without the Holy Spirit. Like, I need him every day. I need his strength. I need his patience. I need his peace. I need his joy in abundance because I, I, I cannot give my children what I don't have myself. We have that living water living inside of us and that's where we tap into our strength from. So whenever you feel like you're stuck, whenever you feel like I can't do this, whenever you feel like I've made a mistake, I'm rubbish, I'm a horrible mother, I want to remind you, you you're not. You have the Holy Spirit who's with you. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. He expects you to rely on him for strength. That's what God is asking us to do. Perfection comes from constantly relying on the Holy Spirit for him to change us. That's where it comes from. It doesn't come from us trying to get our act right on our own together, uh, on our own um, all the time. Or you might be a mom who's like, well, I'm past the phase of raising the kids. They're all grown up. I've got teenagers, I've got 20 some things. And you know, maybe they're, they decided to take um, a path of life that uh, you don't agree with or that's not good for them. Or, you know, they've fallen away from the Lord. And to that, I'll say, Again, remember, our God is a God who is faithful. Our God is a God of the big picture. If you try to look at a picture up close like this, you're not gonna see anything. I mean, my kids try to play with the iPad like that. Like they're constantly like, it's just like, how do you how do you see anything? Um, you're not gonna see anything up close. You have to pull away and look at something from a distance. And that's when you get a bit a better picture of what's really going on. And that's what it's like when we have God in our lives. Right now, in this moment in time, it doesn't make sense sometimes, but if you give, if you step back and and allow God to do his work and look at the bigger picture, you will see that God has a track record of turning things that are impossible, that are challenging, that are incredibly difficult every single time. And he turns them around and makes them something absolutely beautiful. And so I will tell you this, rest in the fact that God sees and knows. And so I just want to encourage you about the nature of our God. And he's a God that just turns around every, every, everything in every situation and makes it beautiful. But also don't forget to stand in your authority as a mother and to pray over your children and keep praying, keep decreeing, keep declaring over them until you see the change that you're believing God for. Because I'm telling you this, our God is faithful. He is faithful till the end. So as you're doing this thing called parenting, which can at day seem like the most mundane thing in the world. I just want to remind you that you're actually planting seeds for the future. You're going to see fruit not only in your lifetime, and maybe it might not be today, it might be a few years from now, but it can also outlast you, outlast your children and go beyond your children and their children's children. Um, This is what you're doing right now at home in the secret place where nobody's seeing you. And so I just wanna encourage you and tell you, you know what, keep it up, don't lose heart, keep going because what you're doing is shaping our future. Literally, you are changing the world from your home. So keep doing it, It's it's an incredible privilege that we have. Yes, it's not easy, yes, it's tiring, but we have a faithful God and a loving Father who is here to cheer us on and to help us when we're weak.
So I just want to pray for you if you're watching, if you're a mom, and I literally just want to pray strength over you. I pray that our amazing Heavenly Father will strengthen you. Uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit will comfort you, will give you strength, will give you joy will give you peace and remind you of who you are as a woman that he has called you to do this and that when we are weak he is strong we don't have to have our act together he comes and he picks up the pieces and he makes everything beautiful in jesus name and so i just wanted to close today with um one of my absolute favorite quotes which is from mother Teresa, and she says if you want to change the world, just go home and love your family. Isn't that amazing? I, I, I just absolutely love that and I live by that. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, uh, comment below. Let me know where you are and in your journey of motherhood and what are the challenges that you face. Um, I'd love to hear from you as well if you like um, want to hear more content like this about parenting or marriage or just let me know uh, your thoughts below. Thank you for watching. This is 310 and I'll see you next time. Bye.